Okay, looking at the clock, it says five o'clock, or as close to it as I can tell from this angle. I'd like to call the meeting of the Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Kern, State of California, to order. Could we please have roll call? Commissioner Fowler. Present. Commissioner Scribner. Commissioner Sanders. Commissioner Rivera. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McKibben. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Morris. Yes. Thank you. I would like to acknowledge the fact that we lost one of our living pres past presidents, George H.W. Bush, and I've asked Commissioner Morris if she would lead us in the pledge, please. Thank you. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the September 26th meeting. Make motion. Them. Second. <laughs> that came too fast there. <laughs> Commissioner McGuire made the motion. Commissioner Fowler seconded. Please cast your votes. need to cast your vote. Is it, is it mine? Okay. It's, it's me. Okay, guys, I'm left-handed. I have to vote on the right side of the screen. It showed what? Well, I'm a, I voted on both. Now I don't know which way to which one to vote on. <laughs> Motion approved. All eyes. Thank you. Okay. Public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons de desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda, and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Okay, I see four of you. No one's moving forward. We will pa go past public comments. Number five, notice public hearings. A, 1736, Sphere of Influence, five-year questionnaire review. Yes, Mr. Knox. Thank you, Ms. Chairman. Every five years, uh, the commission shall, as necessary, review and update each sphere of influence. Kern, Kern LAFCO has chosen to do this by questionnaire and collecting several pieces of key data, including budgets and so forth. Mr. Rice's persistence has paid off with a large batch of districts in one city that have completed the process. These 18 districts in one city are the latest to complete the process. And they are Bear Valley Community Services, Bell Ridge Water Storage, Buena Vista Water Storage, Buttonwilla Water, City of Ridgecrest, Ford City Taft Height Sanitary, Fraser Park Utility, Kern River Valley Cemetery, Kern Tillery Water, Lamont Public Utilities, Mettler County Water, Mountain Meadows Community Service, Muroc Hospital, North River Sanitation District Number One, Quail Valley Water, Semi-Tropic Water Storage, Southern San Joaquin, San Joaquin Municipal Utilities, Tehachapi Resource Conservation, and West Kern Water. 11 districts have indicated that they expect to modify their sphere of influence in the next five years, and those are McFarland Rec and Park, Fraser Park Utilities, Lamont Public Utility, North River Sanitation, Kern Tulare Water, West Kern Water, Metley, Metler County Water, and Quail Valley Water, Semi-Tropic Water Storage, Bell Ridge Water Storage, and Buena Vista Water Storage District. Whew. LAFCO, LAFCO will be working with these districts and city to coordinate and bring these changes to the commission in a timely manner. It is my recommendation to approve the sphere of influence reviews for these 18 districts and the city of Ridgecrest. Okay. 
Okay. Any questions from the public on this? Any comments? Commissioners? I move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner McGuire to approve these uh, 18 plus Ridgecrest? Correct. Okay, cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Now are we going to, Arvin, or are you gonna continue with your on item 5B and 5C is my recommendation that we, at the request of the applicant, I recommend, ten, recommend continuing this item until February uh, 2019 at, that, at the LAFCO meeting at that time. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay, the motion is to continue both B and C, number 1737 and 1740, to the February 2019 meeting Correct. with a com motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner Fowler. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, public project review. We have the North of the River Sanitary District number one, annexation number 107, and county service area CSA number 71, detachment M. Yes. Mr. Knox. Sure. On August 8th, 2018, the North of the River Sanitation District submitted to Kern Lafco annexation number 107 with detachment from CSA 71. This proposal is to annex two parcels. Parcel A is approximately 6.6 .6 acres located north of 7th Standard Merle Haggard Drive and east of Highway 99. Parcel B is comprised of 2.5 acres located one fourth mile north of Hageman Road and one half mile east of Fruitvale Avenue. Total acreage of the annexation number 107 is 9.1 acres. With this annexation, there will be no tax increase. It is consistent with a general plan, regional transportation plan and specific plan uh, the two parcels, parcel A is zoned medium industrial and parcel B is zoned uh, suburban residential. There is no ag land uh, conversion uh, as there are no commercial crops currently being grown on the property. There is not a disadvantaged unincorporated community nearby. It conforms to the assessor's parcel. There is no functional overlap. And as this annexation is within the sphere of the district, uh, a, a municipal service review is not required. Uh, how much water will be used is unknown at this time. The water usage will be analyzed when the parcels are developed, which aren't currently in the process of being developed. Uh, this will not increase uh, or decrease housing. It is consistent with commission policies. The applicant has signed an indemnification agreement and all affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Local Government Reorganization Act of 2000 has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. A notice of exemption has been filed by North River Sanitation District Number 1. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. Applicants have requested notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived. If approved, this project is subject con to condition recommended by the executive officer. My recommendation is to consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice, hearing and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1728 and detach from CSA number 71, and that's detachment M, with conditions set forth by the executive officer. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone in the public who'd like to speak to this, this review? Commissioners? I'll move approval. 
I'll second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Fowler to approve the uh, North of the River annexation and the Kearney, County of Kern CSA detachment. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, now we'll go to number seven, commission items. Commission items, any of you? We're moving right along, general business. Approval of claims list number 1809. Move approval. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Couch to approve the claims list, a second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, item B, consideration of the proposed 2019 meeting schedule. Don't put that up on the screen. <laughs> Included in your packet is a list of proposed dates for the 2019 LAFCO schedule. It follows the pattern used for the last several years of holding meetings on the fourth Wednesday of the month, not having meetings in July and October, and holding meetings in early November and December to not conflict with holidays. Is my recommendation to approve the proposed 2019 meeting schedule? Is it early November or early December? Both. Oh, okay. <laughs> if, if, if we do late November, late December, we run into Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. So we eliminated the October, instead had an early November and an early December. I didn't catch that when I read them. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. I move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch and a second by Commissioner McGuire to approve the schedule as printed in our packets. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Item C, State Controller Inactive District List, which is through SB 448. First one is Keene Water District. Keene Water District listed confirm status, confirm active status. Mr. Knox. Yeah. I'm going to kind of handle these all together. Um, and what I'd like to do, um, well, one of my goals when bringing this item to the, when bringing items to the commission is to resolve as many issues as possible and make the proceedings simple and allow the commission to make a clear decision. On this item, my goals were not met. This is a little confusing and complicated. Uh, this group of items um, there is complicated and there's been additional uh, information provided since the agenda went out, so I need to explain that. Uh, then, um, what I'd like to do is give a bit of a background on the inactive special district dissolution process. Then I would like to go from what I believe are the easiest items and progress to the more complicated and vote on the items as we go along. Uh, so let me do the background and then I'll start doing with the, the county service areas first because those seem to be the simplest. Based on the recommendation of the Little Hoover Commission, the state of legis legislature passed recent legislation to streamline the process of dissolving inactive special districts. SB 448 requires the state controller's office to publish a list of propo proposed inactive special districts throughout the state. Two from Kern County were on the original list the Keene Water District and McAllister Ranch Irrigation District. I personally made a request to the State Controller's Office to include Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District to the inactive list. My request was declined because the Controller's Office does not have record of Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD. I'll get into why in a little bit. I also want to point out that there is a Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District and a Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District. And I'm gonna be talking about both of them, so it could get a little confusing. I don't wanna do that, but just I'll try to keep them straight for you. After receiving the original list, we received an additional list from the State Controller's Office listing 18 county service areas as inactive. 
Once the list was published, local LAFCOs have 90 days to determine if, the district, if a district is indeed inactive. Once the determination has been made, the Commission has another 90 days to start the application process for dissolution. Today, the Commission is required to make a determination on the inactive status of the 18 county service areas, Keene Water District, McAllister Ranch Irrigation District, and Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. So let me start with the county service areas. The county of Kern manages approximately 100 county service areas that perform a number of services in unincorporated areas. Some of these services are no longer needed or are performed by different government entities. According to the county, there are no funds, no transactions, nor any expected use for the CSAs in the future. As such, the county has considered to include this list of CSAs as inactive to be dissolved. I'm not going to read all of them for you. Uh, they have everything to do from road construction to uh, um, crossing guards for schools that the county wants provided and now are provided by school districts. Not that the county doesn't care about kids going to school, just to make sure you know that. So is my recommendation to approve determination of the 18 county service areas as inactive as stated on the state controllers list? At this point, I'd like a vote on this specific item, then we'll go on to the next and the next and the next, so I have specific votes on all of them because they're all a little different. Okay, but I still need to have public comments if there are any. Yes. Any comments on the CSAs that are to be dissolved? Right. Commissioners? I don't have that part in my packet. Um, there's 18 of them, you said? Correct. Is Lamont Stormwater District on that list? No, it is not. Okay, good. Okay, then I still need a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm Andy Hagen with the City of Baker, so let's have a question. Is CSA 71 on that list? No, it is not. I wanted to make sure. I, I had not seen the list. I wanted to make sure. Thank you. We, we, we did detach from CSA 71 today, but not going to dissolve it. Okay. We have a motion by uh, Commissioner Couch, seconded by Commissioner McGuire, to dissolve these CSAs. Cast your vote. Motion approved. All ayes. Okay, Mr. Knox, yes. next. Next is the Keene Water District. This district has been around for decades with an interesting history. The area has been served by infrastructure owned by the railroads. The railroads over the years have threatened to shut down the water system or turn it over to the residents several times since the 1960s. The residents have kept the district, which has a full functioning board and legal counsel, in an active status through this entire time as insurance to provide water if the railroad ever follows through with the abandonment of the current water delivery system. In recent years, there have been water quality problems in the area. Some water is brought in by truck from Tehachapi uh, at substantial cost to the property owners. The residents would like to keep the district active with the hope of creating a full functioning water system in the future. Included in this agenda item is a letter from the attorney for Keene Water District outlining why the district should not be considered inactive. First, the district has an outstanding contract with Southern Pacific Company, SP, to provide water services to Upper and Lower Kern. Second, in 1992, the district secured an easement for water distribution facilities. And third, the district has an outstanding contract with Cush and Parker for legal representation. Is my recommendation to approve determination of Keene Water District as an active district with resolution to be sent to the state controller? Move approval. Anybody in the public like to speak to this item? Commissioners? Second. Thank you. With a Motion by Commissioner Couch, a second by Commissioner McGuire to confirm active status on the Keene Water District. Cast your vote. Motion 
motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. And the next one? Next one would be McAllister Ranch Irrigation District. This irrigation district was created for the purpose of providing services included creating power on site to a large residential development. The development was never finished after the housing crash in the, in the, in the late 2000s. The property was bought by Buena Vista Water District and Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District, which I incorrectly put as Rio Bravo Irrigation District in your agenda, to be used for water recharge area. The boundaries of the irrigation district were reduced several years ago by detachment by LAFCO to just include the property owned by Buena Vista Water District. Buena Vista Water District and Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District have been in a legal battle with the city of Bakersfield over this property for several years now. It is my understanding that the legal uh, proceedings in this main, is the main reason why this land has remained vacant and McAllister Ranch Irrigation District has remained relatively dormant. Initially, the general manager and council for Buena Vista verbally agreed to the dissolution uh, as the sole owner, landowner in the district. Since that time, there has been discussion and further analysis. This has brought Buena Vista Water District to re reassess the value of keeping McAllister Ranch Irrigation District. Monday, I supplied you with a letter from council representing Buena Vista Water District and McAllister Ranch Irrigation District re requesting that this commission determine that the district should remain active. The rationale pro provided that uh, McAllister Ranch Irrigation District currently has assets and that it is owner of a large amount of electrical equipment that was intended to be used for development and operations of utility services. Additionally, McAllister Ranch Irrigation District appears to have outstanding contracts as a party to an agreement affecting real property recorded in, in 2002. Uh, both Buena Vista Water District and McAllister Ranch Irrigation District held board meetings this week and the general man manager confirmed both requested uh, McAllister Ranch Irrigation District uh, remain active. I have requested documentation on their vote. Uh, I'll end up getting their minutes to confirm that that's what the action of their, their boards were. Based on the additional information provided by council for the districts, I am revising my recommendation to approve determination of active status for McAllister Ranch Irrigation District contingent on confirmation from Buena Vista Water Storage D uh, District and McAllister Ranch Irrigation District that they indeed want to keep it active. Okay. Anybody from the public wishing to speak to this? It's your turn. Okay, seeing none. Commissioners? Make a motion to approve. Are we approving or confirming active status? Is that the re where you're requesting? Correct. I'll, I'll second. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner McGuire, a second by Commissioner Couch to confirm the active for this, for McAllister Ranch Irrigation District. Cast your vote. Motion approved, all ayes. Okay, up next. The, the last and most complicated and fun is the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. Uh, this district was not on the state controllers list. Except for the fact that LAFCO has never dissolved this district, this RCD has not operated or existed since the 1980s. Originally, the district was operational and maintained the same boundaries as Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District, shared offices, and many of the same board members served on both boards. Our research has found the, the Resource Conservation District does not exist in this assessor tax rolls, does not have a board, no known assets or liabilities. We are unaware of any current claims against the district. From our extensive research, there appears to be little of any record of existence outside our history files within LAFCO. The only records found outside our office were provided by Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District that included minutes from meetings in 1963. The last contact, yeah, the last contact Colonel LAFCO had with the, dist with the district was in 1986, the year I graduated from high school, just to throw that in. 
As the district has no board of directors, it would be up to the LAFCO Commission to initiate the dissolution process. As such, the Commission would be responsible for the cost of proceeding through the dissolution, dissolution process. To, to streamline the dissolution process and reduce costs, LAFCO staff requested the State Controller's Office place Rosedale Rio Bravo, Bravo RCD on the proposed inactive list. The Controller's Office found no record of Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD existing using the financial reports required in Section 53891, which means they didn't report any revenues for any length of time uh, over the last several years, which makes sense. That's the only piece they're looking at. Uh, as such, the district cannot be placed on the inactive list. The code section 56879 suggests the district needs to be on the inactive list to use the streamline process. Yet, yes, yet, Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD is a prime example of why SB 448 was passed and in, enacted in, in into law. They need want to get rid of inactive districts that aren't are still on the books that need to go away. In further review, staff has concluded that the Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD meets the intent of SB 448, and this and the streamlining process can be used. Including your packet is an opinion from council regarding the use of Section 56879, and has determined that the risk of using this code section to dissolve the district is very low. As this is a new law, there are no court rulings or attorney general opinions on this matter. So we're kind of on our own. So we're, we're making law here. And that's okay. In discussing the dissolution of Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD, the question arises, does this area need conservation services? Adjacent to the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District is the Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District. The Board of Northwest Kern has determined there are areas that could benefit from being within the dis their district boundaries, but they do not have money budgeted to go through the annexation process. Resource conservation districts do not traditionally get a portion of the county's property tax that is allocated to special districts. Instead, their funding comes uh, in the form of grants, federal funds, or possibly state bond money. This does not leave a lot of funding for overhead and other budget, budgeted projects, including the cost of going through an annexation process. In fact, the creation of Northwest Current RCD was a consolidation of three separate RCDs that was initiated and paid for by LAFCO. Nevertheless, I searched for additional funding sources to potentially reduce the impact on the LAFCO budget of, of going through a dissolution and annexation of this area. The California Association of Resource Conservation Districts has been working with the California Department of Conservation to consolidate resource conservations throughout the state. In reviewing this proje project, this, the Department of Conservation is co committed to contributing $15,000 with the possibility of another $5,000 towards the dissolution of Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD and the ex annexation into Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District. This funding will pay a portion of the cost of processing the application, including our fees, mapping, uh, hiring an engineering firm to develop the application, and cost of mailing to the property owners and voters within the new proposed dip boundaries. One of the issues that has arisen from the Department of Conservation is that they would like to ensure the dissolution and annexation goes through if they're going to contribute to the process. I had to inform them that it that to predetermine the outcome of the commission before all evidence is agendized and heard before the commission is a violation of the Brown Act. Can't do that. Uh, the Department of Conservation hasn't said it directly, but they may ask for reimbursement if the annexation does not go through. On this item, I would like direction from the commission on how to proceed. Uh, do we take the money or not take the money? Um, before we get there, there's there are a couple more items. The total price of the dissolution and annexation could cost in excess of thirty to forty thousand dollars. That's my estimate, estimate, estimation. But there are a number of potential options that could bring down this cost significantly. The first is, is the determination of inactive status. The streamlined process is, does not require a study and skip several steps in the nor normal dissolution process, which are expensive. Second, the cost of mailing to all property owners and voters could be substantial. 
As this area has over 16,000 property owners and over 27,000 registered voters, this, this falls within the state code section 56157H, requiring only public notice in a local paper. But it is also within the commission's local policy, section M, that requires us to notify all property owners and voters no, many, no matter how many there are. When you pass that local, local policy, you also gave yourself an out. This commission has the authority to suspend local policy. An argument can be made that those who are to be notified are not likely to be aware an RCD exist, existed or were supposed to be providing services in their area. This could be quite confusing to constituents who are not familiar with how special districts operate and are funded. In addition, there will be no tax consequences if this area is taken over by Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District. I should also point that it's true that this commission uh, once uh, had did an annexation where no property tax consequences were placed on landowners, but it still didn't stop the notification process to become a political and legal issue. While the commission was successful in defending its position and it was identified by the applicant, it does take staff and resources away from the performance of core duties of LAFCO. And for those who've been here for a long time, that was the hospital district that I'm referring to that went to, went to court over the notification process. A third option uh, is to cut the cost of application would be to reduce the size of the annexation. Um, we have a map up on the board. It's not the one I wanted. Oh. That one. Okay. The map up on your board, in green, it would be Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource <laughs> Conservation District. In yellow is Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District. And you can see that it, in, it surrounds a good portion of Rosedale Rio Bravo. Now, if we decide to only take a portion of Rosedale Rio Bravo, and what I, would, what I would suggest is not including the eastern portion of the district, uh, you would go from, what's my number? 16,000 property owners and over 27,000 registered voters. If we, we cut the line off at Nord Road, we would now be down to 1,800 property owners and 1,300 registered voters. The eastern half has been urbanized since Rosedale Rio Bravo RCD went, went dormant. Uh, so there is a ton of properties there, but as you move west, it becomes agricultural and you have a lot fewer property owners. And that's really the area that the conservation district wants to, to focus on anyway. So with that, my recommendation is to approve determination of inactive status for Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. And I got a couple more and we'll come back through and, and vote on each of these. Approve LAFCO initiation of annexation process for Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District, contingent on receipt of California Department of Conservation funds, determination of inactive status of Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District, and confirmation for Northwest Kern RCD Board of, uh, to initiate annexation process. They've approved it in, in concept, but they wanted to see where we're going first before they, they approved the whole going through the, going through the annexation process. I would like direction uh, for notification requirements of property owners and voters within the proposed project area and or whether we, we shrink the district to not include the eastern portion. Also would like direction to accept funds from the Resource Conservation Depart the California Department of Conservation for the dissolution of Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. So with that, let me go back to the, the, the original one. Uh, it's my recommendation to approve determination of inactive status for Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District. This would allow for the streamlined process of dissolving this district. Okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak to this item? Okay, commissioners, anybody have questions? Yes, Mr. Couch. <clears throat> I say you take the money first, 
go with the downsized um, annexation. You said Nord Road is the cutoff? That's what we're proposing, okay. yes. Uh, I don't see a need necessarily. I don't think we need to send notices. We're not changing anybody's taxes. We're not changing anybody's way of life. I think you could, I personally think you can save the money on that because most people in that area, I'll bet, don't even know this thing exists because we didn't even know it existed. Um, do I am concerned about one little thing though, and that's the same board, I think you said, for the Rosedale Rio Bravo Resource Conservation District was the Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District. There were, there were, it wasn't completely the same, but many of the same members were on both. Okay. And, but that was back in the 70s and 80s. I understand. Do we have anything in our file, though, from Rosedale Rio Bravo Water Storage District saying, as far as they know, this district is unneeded and it is dormant? We do not, and as far as we can tell, all the board members that were there have since deceased. But do we have anything from the, the current uh, director? Mm. What we do have, we, we had a conversation with Rosedale Rail Bravo Water Storage District, mm -hmm. and they indicated that they had no interest of keeping this or reactivating this district. And you, I mean, they, did they say that verbally, or do we have that in? We, we have we have that we have that in writing okay. as an email. Yes. Good. Thank you. So that's that's my recommendation. It's a motion unless there's a lot of disagreement with that. Okay, so if I understand Commissioner Couch, he's saying take the money, downsize to Nord Road, and just publish in the paper not to each individual. Okay, I need a second. Second, I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Couch to take the money, downsize the size from Nord Road, and do the notification in the newspaper. Second by Commissioner McGuire. Cast your vote. Uh, Chairman, yes, can sir. I make one more recommendation, maybe to, uh, to change, to add a, a waiver of fees for Northwest Kern Resource Conservation District? I'll include that in the motion. And I'll second that. Just to clarify. Okay. With that one clarification, now you can cast your vote. Yeah. I'm fighting with it. <laughs> Motion passed with six yes and one no. Okay. Go to item D, Executive Officer Miscellaneous Items. I would like to start by congratulating all the commissioners who were up for election last month. Every commissioner who was up for election won. Congratulations. <laughs> exit polls showed that voters looked at your excellent work on Laflo Commission <laughs> as a reason why they voted for you. Let's keep up the good work. <laughs> uh, since your last meeting, your staff has been busy. And by the way, congratulations to all of you. Uh, Mayor McGuire. It's, that's a new position for you. Congratulations. Uh, since last we met, we met uh, staff and several of, of the commissioners went to the Calafco conference, which, which was October uh, 2nd through the 5th. We were rep well represented by all your staff and commissioners. I continue to make contacts with our LAFCOs and develop strong relationships with commissioners who attend. I want to talk a little bit about one of the sessions that was at the, at the uh, conference. That was a particular interest to me, and that was on groundwater. Unfortunately, all the presenters on the panel were from the coastal counties where their issues are completely different than those in the valley and in the high desert that we are dealing with here locally. In fact, one of the commissioners, and I believe it was from Kings County, called him on the differences, stating, I think I'm living in a different universe than this panel. Uh, the panel quite, quite conveniently closed the session before answering her question. I tell you this because SIGMA, the State Groundwater Management Act, is starting to show up more and more 
in the LAFCO world. We have met with several districts and cities about a variety of ways Sigma will affect how services will, will be provided in the future. As you are aware, Tohonka Stick Water District recently annexed a large section of Tohon Ranch that was not in a water district for the sole purpose of managing Sigma. As groundwater sustainability agencies are being formed and information on groundwater quantity and quality are, be are becoming available, Sigma will play a significant role in the, in the future development and in our ability to assess the amount of water available for that development. Currently on many applications, LAFCO requires a water assessment to show that water can be provided to an area under consideration for annexation. This water assessment in many cases only provides the number of wells in operation and the capacity that those wells can currently deliver water. It does not show depth of wells, water depths, water quality. With Sigma, we believe we will be able to better analyze if water resources are available for years to come. So I wanna make sure, sure you're aware that we are working on that. And that is gonna be an issue going forward. Uh, during October, um, we had auditors in from Brown Armstrong, who you approved as our auditing accounting firm. Uh, they were in our office for several days in late October. We are still answering questions from Brown Armstrong, but hope to have the audit complete by the end of this calendar year, so the end of the month. And so we'll hopefully bring this back to you in January. As uh, you may have noticed, we have gone to electronic agendas. Uh, if you have any issues with those, please let us know what they are. Um, we're still trying to modify that process and make it as simple as possible for you to build and navigate your way through the agenda. Um, and we actually have a goal to have electronic process for applications uh, all applications get away from a paper uh, by the end of this fiscal year. So that would be a big step for us. I think I mentioned in the past that we, I am looking for new office space, or at least new for us. I've done a bit of, bit of looking, starting to look. I will start looking at the beginning year uh, more closely at that. Our contract runs out, our, our lease runs out in May, so I have some time. Um, if you know of someone in the commercial real estate business who can help, please let me know. It gets a little, yeah, there's all kinds of people who handle all kinds of different properties. So I want to talk to a variety of people, not just rely on a couple different, different folks on that. Uh, last meeting, we had a discussion about the over-assessment collected over the last two years, if you remember that. All those funds have now been returned to the county, cities, and special districts with an explanation of how the error happened and was expected going forward. Uh, at the next meeting, we'll be electing a new chair and vice chair. Traditionally, the vice chair moves up to chair. Uh, I guess I'm thinking that is uh, Mr. McKibben. And then next up for vice chair would fall to the cities. Um, so we have to make a determination on that next time. Yeah, and with that, our next meeting is Wednesday, January 23rd, uh, 2019, and that's, I'm gonna make some more comments before we go into closed session. Uh, Mr. Rice has, has worked up some statistics from what we've done this last year, and they're pretty impressive. We've worked with 92 different agencies over the last year. We've completed 19 annexations, completed two detachments, have done uh, five sphere of influence amendments, approved three municipal service reviews, has six protest hearings, had one extension of services. We removed, uh, had a removal of condition, which is the first time I've seen that happen. Uh, we have done 23 sphere of influence review questionnaires. Uh, we currently have nine uh, pending proceedings that we have uh, proceeding numbers on, so they're in the process, and we have 32 projects that are in our pipeline that are coming that uh, we, d we don't have an application yet to start a proceeding on, but we know they're coming. Uh, so we have a lot on our plate, and um, we've had a terrific year. Uh, with that, 
Uh, I turn it back over to the chair to put us into closed session. Thank you. Listening to all that makes me wonder if you, uh, if the whole, all the staff is tired. Okay, we will now end this part of the meeting and go into closed session. thumbs can work. This microphone. Um, we ended up back there without legal counsel and we had a problem with that so we would like to uh, move this to the January meeting. Will we have, will we have legal counsel then? I believe so, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That, that's the outcome of our our closed session. Very well. Okay. Thank you. Now, now I'll go from closed session back to the regular meeting and close and adjourn the meeting.